I'm struggling to believe that there were Victorian farmers who were auctioning off for sacks of mummified cats that they then ground up and put on fields. Yep, it's apparently very good for the fields. Hey guys, I'm at the University of Manchester Museum for the Manchester Science Festival and I come specifically for the Gift for the Gods exhibition and I get to meet curator of Egyptology, Campbell Price and together we are going to unwrap everything you thought you knew about animal mummies. Let's go in! So what was the Egyptians' relationship with animals? It was much closer, I think, than we have today. We have farm animals. But in ancient Egypt, they thought of animals as images of the gods. Okay. So if you want to get in touch with the gods, you give them an image of themselves. They're very vain, they're very demanding. Okay. It might be that the Egyptians gave thanks in the form of a statuette. This could be a little model of an animal in the form of the god. So let's say you want to give offering to Thoth who is the baboon god of knowledge, you'd give him a little statue of a baboon. But what was even more valuable is if you mummified an actual baboon and gave that as an offering. If you gave something like that, all the more likely your prayers are going to get answered. The Egyptians were respectful right. to animals, but they were also raising them in their millions for slaughter to supply the huge demand for the animal mummies. So you've got your offering, you have mummified your cat and you want to give it to a god because you are seeking advice or protection. So you would give it to your local priest and then once a year he would go down into the catacomb of a specific god and they would put these hundreds of thousands of mummies alongside one of the corridors and then seal it up. And hopefully, as a result, you'd get your prayers answered. Okay, so you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions, yep. of maybe, let's say, mummified cats that yep. are inside a catacomb. Yep. The Victorians, they come along and they discover just this mass of mummified animals. What do you do with them? You think, well, we could use uh, some fertilizer. So you get <laughs> 100, an estimated 180,000 mummified cats and you pack them on ships, you send them to Liverpool and they get auctioned off <gasps> on the dockside to farmers. There were some curators who tried to get some examples for museums, but most of them ended up on the fields. Thankfully today, we aren't the Victorians and we're not using thousands of cat mummies as fertilizer. We're actually using science to look inside the wrappings and just see what we can discover. The University of Manchester has just been leading studies into mummies and animal mummies more recently. And they've been using CT scans at a local hospital out of hours to actually put these mummies through the CT scans and uh, for the first time in thousands of years reveal what is underneath that linen and they've been finding some absolutely fascinating things. We discovered that inside often if something looks like a cat on the outside it's not a cat on the inside. Remember all these animal mummies were produced to supply a huge demand and there weren't enough animals. It might still be sacred right. but it's not what it says in the tin. Let's say you wanted to give thanks to the god Sekhmet and she was the, the feline goddess but you didn't have a cat the Egyptians would just gather whatever they could, maybe that was mud and reeds, or even a few human bones, and they would just wrap it up in the shape of a cat, and that would do. Now, I knew that the Egyptians had a relationship with cats, but little did I know, they might even mummify a crocodile. So, my colleagues have collected the ancient Egyptian animal biobank. And it contains everything from cats to crocodiles, ibis birds to shrews and... No, Snakes. no way. The way they would have prepared it is to have dipped it in a resin and then they would have wrapped it up. It was actually a far less complicated process than you would mummify a human because mummifying a human was quite lengthy and involved drying a body out is pretty grim. But with animals, just because of the sheer massive offerings that were being made on a daily basis, the process was just a lot quicker. So essentially everything you thought about animal mummies might, this yeah. Might not be right. What they were you? not pets. That's a big thing. They were not pets. If an ancient Egyptian came back today and thought, whoa, we are now going around picking up dog poo and we actually spend 6.4 billion pounds on animals just right. domestic animals in the UK alone. I think the Egyptians would be surprised. There you go, guys. Thank you so much, Campbell. You're welcome. That was fascinating.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video from the Gifts for the Gods exhibition. This was just one of the many incredible things happening at the Manchester Science Festival 2015, so make sure you go look it up and visit their future events. Here are my last two videos for you to enjoy, and stay curious, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.